If you've been having trouble setting up a one-to-many relationship in ASP.NET Core MVC, then you should watch this video because that's exactly what we'll do using the latest .NET version, .NET 9. So first things first, what is a one-to-many relationship? Let's say we have a list of items stored in our database and we want each item to belong to a single category. In this case, one category can be assigned to many items, but each item can belong to only one category. This requires a one-to-many relationship between the category and the items. In this video, we'll learn exactly how to set this up, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. We'll connect our models to each other, make the necessary changes in our action methods, and then see how it looks on the front end. We already have a project set up with some base code where we've implemented the CRUD operations and created an item model. You can see how we did that in a previous video by clicking the card on the screen or you can find the link in the description below. Well, welcome to Code the Future, my name is Arlen and I help you learn C Sharp and .NET on your own. Now let's get into it. So let's get back to the project and let's go back to the item model as our main model. And we can actually connect this to like a category. And a category is like a one-to-many relationship model with the item, but from the categories side. So a category, let's say electronics, books, or something like that can have multiple items be part of it, but a specific item can be part only of one category. So how we can write this relationship? Let's just go to the models folder and add a new class. Let's name category. And I will give it normally an int ID property, a name for the name of, of the category. And I'll initialize it so that we skip the warning that the compiler gives us. So giving it like an initial value and telling the compiler, we'll set a value to this name later. And then we can connect this, we should connect this with a list of items. I'll name it items. And then we'll make this property to be nullable with the question mark so that when we firstly create a new category, for example, we do not need to like to connect it with an item right away. We can add this later on. So one category can have multiple items, but if we go back to the items model, one item can have only one category. So I'm gonna need a public int ID property, not int ID, but let's say category ID, and a public category named category Let's specify the foreign key here so that our category will be connected. Our item will be connected with the category model with by using the category ID property as a foreign key. And I'm gonna make both of these properties as nullable so that if we have created a new item, we do not need to specify the category right away. Now that we have specified how this relationship looks in our model classes, I'm gonna go to the control to the context and add a dbset instance for us to be to be able to store this category model in our database as a model instance. So I'll write here category name it categories in plural as a practice. And I'm also, I'm going to create manually two categories in our database. So I'll use this model builder class as well, that entity, that category, that has data method. And just write here a new category. an ID of one and the name of, let's say firstly electronics. 
And I'm just not gonna connect this uh, with an item right now. We're gonna set it up in our action method so that we can do it, let's say, interactively in our application. And like a new category as well, okay. I'll give it the ID of two and I'll name it, let's say something else like books. Just as a reminder, if you want to get the fundamentals right while learning C Sharp, you should check out my ebook, which is on sale now. It will help you with whatever you're building in .NET and save you hours of research by providing all the C Sharp insights you need in one place. This book will be a valuable resource for everything C Sharp related, and you can find the link in the description if you want to check it out. Now back to the video. Now I'm just gonna add the migration firstly to the database and then we'll handle our action methods. So just add um, migration one to many, let's name this migration. And I'm just gonna update the database. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to the items controller. And let's start with the index action method. We're gonna to need to include the categories when we search for the items in our context. So I'm just gonna place this a bit below in one line so that we can see everything better. So I'm just gonna write this that include method again, give it a variable like C, and just include the category when we search for the items in our database so that this is included as well. But now that we haven't connected actually any of our items with any categories, so we're gonna need to set it up in our create page so that you know when you create like an object, you will have an option. Let's say when you create the item, you'll have the option to select one of the default categories. For this reason, we are gonna need to display all of the categories that we have in our database in the create page. How we can do this, we're gonna use the view data dictionary that you can use in ASP.NET Core I'll name it here. We'll give it a name here of like, like category. And here we'll give we'll give a select list to this view data. What this select list will contain. We'll look through the context to get the categories and we'll search them by the ID. And we'll basically say here that we'll display them by their names. So we'll get the ID and the name of these categories from looking it through the database. And this list that will be created here, we'll give it into our view data dictionary. We're going to need to write this using directive on top of our page. This using microsoft.asp.netcore.mvc.rendering, which basically is the directory that includes this class, the class for our select list. And now we have basically have a view data dictionary passed to our create page that we can use in our create view page. Let's go to our create view page here. And how we will access this, I'm going to need another div here, a form here for the, the user to be able to input a category when they create the items. So the label will be for the category ID. Let's say category here as the label for this form. And actually we are gonna need to use here like a select HTML tag. Here we need to specify this tag helper is before to connect this to the category ID property. And the in the ASP item, in the ASP items tag helper here, we're gonna need to include basically what we take from our view data dictionary. We can do this by writing view back that 
categories, which was the name of our view data. And the view bag is actually the class, just like a dictionary that we use to take this data that we have from our controller and display it here on the view pages. So this is as well another class. And I'm just going to name, give a class to our select list here of form control. And this is it with the view page, what should we should write in our view page, if we go back to the controller. Now, if we go to the post action method, we need to bind here the category ID that will take from that select list as well. And we could leave it as it is now, but we can do the same thing and modify the edit page as well. So that for the items where we haven't specified the category, we can edit them later. So I'm going to need this view data dictionary here to input in the edit method, in the edit action method. In the post method, we can include then the category. I did just the same way we did with our with our create method and we are going to need to modify the edit view page by just giving it this line this div group here for the list that we had from the create page let's input it in the edit view page just the same thing so we're inputting like there like a form for us to modify the category as well and if i run the application let's just see how we can create an item with a category from the list of categories we have in our database and how we can edit it for maybe the items where we didn't input a category. So if I just refresh here, let's go to the create page. Okay, so we have probably made like a typing mistake somewhere. This select text, I forgot an E, select here as well. And let's just update it in the edit page as well. Okay, let me run the application one more time. Here we see in the category input here, we have a list of both of the categories that we have written in our database. So we can select either electronics or books. Since we have a books category, let me write the name for a book. Let's say tech book, like C sharp book. Let me give a price to it, like $20. The category is books. Let me submit it. It should be redirected to the index page. A C sharp book was created here. We had the price, we didn't give it a serial number, but we forgot to write the column for the categories actually. So let me go back to the project, to the index view page. Okay, just another column header here for the category. And down below as well to get the value of the category for each item. So item that category that name and we can put the question mark here if it's null we'll display it we'll display nothing let me run the application one last time at least i hope one last time okay so we see here in the category column here we see that for the item that we created we see the books the category now since we change the edit action method and the edit view page, we can basically edit these two other items to have a category as well. So if I go back to the first item and click on edit, we can input a category to the first item, click submit. And the keyboard now has an electronics category. Let's go to the microphone item. I'll leave it as electronics as well. Click on submit. So we change the category for these two items as well. So the electronics category is connected to two items in this case.
If this video was helpful, you have to watch the next video that appears on the screen to learn how the many-to-many -many relationship works. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons for more content like this, and I'll see you soon.